The AFL Grand Final will be played here in Perth for the first time ever this weekend. So this week on Paint It Black, I take a look at the defining political moments in AFL history. So stay tuned as I take you through the stories behind the headlines in these iconic Indigenous moments in sport. And be sure to subscribe to my channel, Paint It Black. There's a stereotype that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are amazing athletes. And although I don't tend to like stereotypes, this is one that I can stand behind. One of the fields, pun intended, that we excel in is the AFL. And considering that the sport is influenced by Mangrook, a ball game played by Aboriginal people across southeastern Australia, I'm not surprised that the AFL has one of the best representations of Indigenous athletes. There's a belief that politics has no place in sport, but sometimes sport can be the best place to make a political statement, just like these following moments in AFL. Drafted in 1997 on the same day that he sat his Year 12 exam, Adam Goods was already looking like a promising AFL player and he didn't disappoint. Playing his whole 16-year career for the Sydney Swans, he left an impressive record after his retirement. Unfortunately, though, the end of Goodsey's career was overshadowed by controversy. During the 2013 AFL Indigenous Round, a 13-year-old Collingwood supporter called Goodsey an ape. Upon hearing the abuse, he reported it to security who ejected her from the stadium. The young girl apologised and said she didn't understand the context behind the slur. Goodsey repeatedly said she wasn't to blame. But over the next few years, the Swans player was constantly and loudly booed by fans. It was the same every time Adam Goods went near the ball yesterday. A chorus of boos. Today, one of two Eagles supporters ejected from Domain Stadium for abuse told the West Australian... It was a flippant, off-the-cuff remark. The whole world has gone too politically correct. It was just part of the banter of the game. The media debated if this was or wasn't racially driven. Things got even worse for Goodsey when he celebrated a goal during Indigenous Round with a celebration dance that some in the crowd found to be intimidating and aggressive. Another round of media attention debating the issue erupted and Goodsey ended up taking some stress leave and eventually he retired by the end of the 2015 season. The AFL did little to condemn the abuse at the time and failed to support Goodsey. An apology was finally issued by the league four years after his retirement and on the eve of a documentary which highlighted just how bad racism was surrounding the player. In 2021, Goodsey rejected the AFL's offer to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Before there was Adam Goods, though, there was Michael Long. The Essendon player wasn't just a legend on the field, but also off it. Long was the reason behind the sport's racial anti-vilification policy, following a very controversial moment during the first ever Anzac Day match between the Bombers and the Pies. During the 1995 match, Collingwood player Damien Monkhorst racially abused Long. It was this incident with Collingwood's Damien Monkhorst on Anzac Day that has catapulted Michael Long into the headlines again. Long made an official complaint, making him the first Indigenous player to speak about racial abuse within the sport. The incident led to a long mediation, followed by a massive press conference. This morning, uh, Michael Long and Damien Monkhorst have uh, met and uh, have resolved the dispute. By reaching agreement with Long, Monkhurst avoided being penalised by the AFL. It's the Commission's view, however, that penalties are not the solution. We believe that uh, mediation is definitely the best way to resolve these matters. But Long didn't sound as convinced when asked whether he was happy with the way the matter had been handled. Uh, as I said before, I mean, <laughs> where do you draw the line? Where, where, where's it going to stop? Not only for myself, but for the, for the kids, uh, for all races of people, know that they can't sort of use that language. Following the incident, the AFL adopted a new rule aimed at stopping racial and religious vilification. 
The Aboriginal flag and the issue of copyright hasn't caused as much controversy as it did during last year's AFL season. For Michael Long and Nova Paris, a mini long walk with Darwin school kids. There'll be a virtual one Saturday on social media. But they're furious. The Aboriginal flag will not adorn AFL grounds this Indigenous round. The flag should be there. It, it's, it's got its rightful place in Australia. It's the people's flag. It's horrific. It's horrendous. Like there's... It's really hard to actually comprehend. All because of a dispute between the AFL and the flag design's two non-Indigenous copyright owners. How can you copyright our lives? How do you copyright a race of people? How do you copyright our history? That's effectively what's, what's happening here. The AFL and the NRL both received cease and desist letters over their use of the Aboriginal flag on their Indigenous round jerseys. But last year, the clubs began to fight back. Initially, the AFL decided to drop the flag from the centre of the field and replace it with the word deadly. Following this news, several clubs began to take matters into their own hands. With teams wearing the Free the Flag tee, which was part of a social media movement to lift the copyrights of the Aboriginal flag. Several players spoke out about the issues surrounding the use of the flag. It's disappointing and um, yeah, I would love the fans as much as they can to get behind um, all things Aboriginal. It's important to, to all Aboriginal people, but more importantly to all Australians. And one of the biggest political moments in sporting history, which has also been replicated by many sports stars both in the AFL and other fields, goes to Nicky Winmar. In 1993, Nicky Winmar was one of the top players in the code. But despite his obvious talent, Winmar was copying a bunch of racist taunts from spectators. On April 17, 1993, St Kilda faced Collingwood at the Magpies' home ground. The game was close, but the Saints came out on top. As the sirens sounded, Winmar was standing near the Collingwood cheer squad. Some Magpie fans weren't gracious in their defeat and continued to hurl racial abuse. Winmar raised his hand in victory to the cheering squad and then proceeded to raise his jumper and pointed to his skin saying, I'm black and I'm proud to be black. Winmar had no idea his spontaneous gesture would become the permanent reminder it now is. The next day I looked at the paper and said, what have I started here? Winmar's stance left a lasting legacy for all Indigenous athletes. During the NRL's Indigenous All-Stars war dance in 2020, Melbourne star player Josh Adokar, a proud Wadjeri man, lifted his top and mimicked Winmar's gesture. In 2019, Winmar's iconic image was immortalised in a statue at the front of Optus Stadium here in Perth. What was a day of derision celebrated <laughs> for the way Winmar stood up for himself teammate Gilbert McAdam and Aboriginal people everywhere. To see an Indigenous person actually get a statue, that's, I'm really proud of him mate, to do that. And not many people get a statue, so it's proud, I'm really proud for him. The leadership and the courage of, of Nicky and, and Gilbert McAdam that day uh, sparked a conversation. It's the first statue of an Aboriginal player outside any AFL venue. A proud moment for this Noongar man. So did your favourite political moment in sport make the cut? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Paint It Black to stay up to date with my weekly videos. And be sure to pick up a copy of The West Australian on Monday to read my column.